On the previous episode of Coastlines, we fished the north point of San Salvador. There, I caught my first ever NASA grouper and I caught the biggest trigger fish of my life. We finished the day off playing with some sharks at the marina. Today is a very big deal. We finally have the wind to kite fish from the beach. The whole thing today is all 100% new to me. I've, I've never kite fished, so. It is so much fun. It's so visual, bro. I mean, unfortunately, the kite's gonna be so far away, we're probably not gonna see the bite, but. Uh, really? Yeah, it's gonna be hard to see the bite. So you're using the kite essentially as, a, as an outrigger, right? Or yeah, it, kind or, of, or kind you of. You want it to move a lot? Is that, the, is that the point? You want the kite to move? Yeah. No, not really. You want it to stay in one spot. You just want to make sure that your baits are... It, the, the one thing is the kite isn't going to go up and down with the wind, right? The wind's not going to... It's never okay. exactly the same. So you got to keep you. adjusting the line so the bait is sitting in the right so spot. So the bait's going to be just subsurface, like just right there? Yeah, just subsurface, yeah. Like a green stick kind of? Yep. Cool. Dude, it's so effective. I'm excited, dude. I can't wait. I want to learn something. So Preston, yo, we definitely got good wind now, bro. Good. So getting the kite up and getting it up high is gonna be a thing. The only problem with a high kite is with braid, we, we might run into problems. Yeah. A lot of problems. Other problem is getting bait. We got rocks right here, so we're gonna have to try to catch fish here. I think we need to have the kites completely set up so that if we do catch a fish for bait, that we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best way. We don't have a live well. Nope. Dude, the worst case scenario, we can't catch bait. You got we'll a ballyhoo? We got a ballyhoo. Yeah. We'll let the rig up ballyhoo. Ah. All right. I need that guy right there. I can do this. I think I can carry all this. Let's see. My legs hurt so much, I might fall over. Hey, Preston, you mind holding this for a sec, buddy? This sand is going to pound so, so, it is so soft. funny there's so many variables dude like I cut the pipes well we, we had them cut up at 50 inches and we had another pipe that was like 65 inches it would have been better it would have been way better bro yeah. cause you didn't I didn't anticipate how soft the sand would be You gotta, you gotta, you gotta hold, hold the kite up. Yeah. Let, let, let the wind catch it. Might have to use the white kite. It's that, it's that hill, bro. I'm telling you. I gotta use the white kite. I gotta use the bigger kite. That's correct. All right. This kite feels so much better. Just hold I, that real quick. I'm a novice at this. So the, the red kite was a heavier kite. Yeah, that's for a heavier wind. With less surface area, or is it the same size? Oh, this no, this one has more surface area. Let's okay. just see. Let's see. How, let's see what we're doing. Let it go. Laughing, bro. It's a lot more better. It's gonna go so high, dude. We gotta weigh it down with the bait. While Preston and I were setting up the kite, Davis managed to catch the first bait fish of the day. Beautiful bait, bro. Some yeah. great work catching that thing. Good teamwork. All right, Preston, just, just walk into the water. Put it in a free spool. There we go. Tight fishing in San Salvador, baby. This is exciting, man. I've never done this. I like it. Can't wait. What's up? Is the bait not in the water? I can't see it. Bait is in the water, but we need more weight. 100% for how high the kite is. Oh, oh dude, look at the sharks, bro. Oh my gosh, dude, look at them all. Oh, they're everywhere. Oh my gosh, look at them. They, they heard the word wahoo, and they're like, woo! Lemons, bro, look at the lemons. We got our kite sitting pretty much perfectly right now, and it's just an absolute surreal moment that we are here in San Salvador with a kite in the air and a live bait off the beach in prime Wahoo territory. I mean, this is incredible. Dude, it really is, yeah. dude. We have a good, a really good chance, I think. 
I think if we get some bigger baits, I think they'll still eat what we have right here. But if we get bigger baits, bro, we're gonna be, we're really gonna have a good shot of getting a fish. Like, like insanely good shot. This is Alan. We met him yesterday at the marina. Preston and him were talking. Preston showed him a picture of our NASA grouper we caught yesterday. And he was just like lit up like a, like a Christmas tree. And awesome personality. You grew up here on the island? Yeah, I did. Have you ever seen anybody fly kites like this off the beach? Never. Not a day in my life. <laughs> Do you think this could work? I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm interested to see it. This is, I think this is going to be something. This is like just mind blowing. <laughs> this is one of the closest points where the wall can where the land gets to the wall. Yeah. So this is like the perfect spot for something like this. I would never think we could use this area for something like that, so it's impressive. I always wanted, this is a dream of mine, bro, to put a kite out off San Sal and catch a wahoo from shore. Be the first person to ever catch a wahoo from shore that I know of. It's gonna become my dream, too. <laughs> Good stuff, but I'll be to have you guys. I love it, man. Fish on. You gotta, you gotta grab the clip, you gotta grab the clip. There we go. Was it hard to pull out? Yeah, he, he may have been on there for a while. Yeah. You know? The battery we got didn't work with the kite reel, unfortunately. <laughs> so, so we had to crank in the kite. Yeah, I know, I was worried. We didn't think there was anything there. And then we saw something was there, and I think, I think it's gone now. Unless Come it's off? Unless it's swimming, I think so, bro. Bro, it bit through the wire, bro. Oh my gosh. Went through the wire, dude. Heavy wire, too. Bro, he was on there for a while. He ate it. It's number 10 wire. There was six feet of wire, bro. This thing had a lot of wire in its mouth. Yeah. yeah. Well, re-rig. I got another rig tied up. We got to put more weight on. We got to change, change our kite. That's insane, bro. And I don't know what that was, bro. Could have been a shark. Could have been a wahoo. Could have been... Something something big with weight. Hey, you know what? When I first came here, I was gonna double up, I said I was gonna double up the wire. Have to. Might have to use double number 10, dude. All right, we're learning. That was a serious fish, bro. I mean, it had weight, that had, had weight on it, bro. I, I felt it for a second. And then it went right, right through the wire. That's three ounces. I think if we put eight ounces, it'll weigh it down. And then if I weigh the kite down, we just gotta get that kite lower or we're gonna run out of line. And I think, I think, I think Eric's right, putting a balloon on there. It's gonna, uh, it's gonna make a huge difference for our indicator. The traditional indicator is not big enough. I'm doubling up the wire, I'm twisting it, braiding it. I got number, that was number 10, a single strand. I'm doing double number eight. I don't wanna go too thick yet, cause it might, it might, the fish might not bite it. I don't know, I mean, Wahoo hit cable, they, they don't really care, but I just can't see them going through this, no way. Not a Wahoo, a big shark go through this, no problem, but not a Wahoo, just can't see it, maybe. These are big fish here. These are really, this is the legendary San Sao where 100 pound wahoo is a very real possibility every day. There it is, doubled up, number eight wire, twisted up. Should be good. I'm gonna use two floats so that we can see the indicators. It's so far out, it's hard to see one. May not even make a difference. Hey Preston, you guys got a bait? What do you get? All right, Preston, you wanna put him in the water? Yeah. Sending it, hold on, yeah, we're good, good. Everything's better now. Height lower, we're not gonna burn as much line. I love this kite, so slow. We started off with a red kite, there wasn't enough wind. We switched to the white kite, it was just the wind picked up and it was way too high and too far. So we switched back to the red kite. We, we put a split shot to bank it right. I put eight ounces sinker on this one instead of three ounces so we can weigh the line down. And we are flying much better. We're about to get to the edge. So we're on the southwest corner of the island called Sandy Point. And the ocean has no fences. And any, anything, could, anything could happen. Dude, a swordfish could swim up right here and hang out with us. It's possible. I think we need a bigger bait out there, bro. I think that little bait is a waste of time. I'll go try over there real quick, bro. You, you wanna watch this kite real quick? Woo! Guys, look at that. 
on the bucktail. I think that's a pudding wife wrasse. Just caught him right here in the surf at the rocks. How beautiful is that fish? Oh, he's hooked up. He took it, I promise. Is he taking line? He took it, but it's in the rock now. It's in the rocks? Yeah. Uh, that's what I think it is. Black grouper. There's a lot of grouper here. <laughs> there he goes. Bro, how strong is that, dude? That ain't no 30 pound test, bro. <laughs> so, Alex, like where that, where that was, we were here. A lot of hoopers and snappers. Yeah. A lot of yeah. Of water. Oh, yeah. Never thought we'd have to deal with reef fish breaking Coming us up, off. Yeah. I mean, we brought a lot of line, but that's a huge problem. We definitely, if we get another big bait, we gotta skip it, quickly cross that, that, that uh, reef. Because, dude, even when you're high speed trolling in the Bahamas, a black grouper will come up and yeah. eat your ice cream coin lures. Yeah, and the way this is right here, it's hard It's hard to really probably translate on camera, but you got, you got a little sand flat, and then you have a series of little reefs, and then reefs. the reefs get bigger, and so we have these obstacles we got to overcome, uh, getting the bait out and also bringing it back. Something's going to eat it for sure. What a bait. Perfect size. Press him, just keep him alive, bro. Get the guy, I'm gonna get the kite in the air. You ready? Yeah. Dude, there's a lot to this right now, guys. I'm trying to make sure, I've never used a balloon on a kite before. And uh, it's definitely a lot more heavier than a little little red and a pink clip that we normally use. I'm trying to get to the ledge, I'm trying to concentrate. I do not want to get eaten by one of those groupers again like Preston that just have a Preston. I'm trying to get out there fast without popping the clip. There's a lot of finesse here right now. We're moving pretty good. There we go. Balloons out of the water. The, the amount of stress that's involved right now trying to get the bait out there without getting eaten by a cuda or a grouper or a snapper before we get to the edge. And the balloon is definitely huge. And I think what the balloon's gonna do is it's gonna keep, when, the, when this fish eats that bait, because there's so much slack, I think it's gonna keep, hopefully, if it doesn't pop, it's gonna keep that line tight. And uh, that will keep the hook buried in the, in the corner of the mouth. I have, I, have, I have a high hopes now that something's gonna hook. We're gonna get one. We're gonna get one. You're in good waters. Perfect timing. How deep is that water right there? You've dove that before, right? Yeah, I scuba dive it lots of times. Is that uh, over 100 feet where we are? Definitely. Oh my God. <laughs> definitely. Once you get once you get past that 150 drop off, you you're going down to thousand plus. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> After seven hours of kite fishing, we all got pretty hungry. So Davis, Preston, and Alan headed into town to get a pizza. And while they were gone, I hooked a really big fish. Hooked up, man. We are hooked up on something. Oh, my arms are burning. I'll tell you what, guys, we had a kite fishing here on the beach. Had a fish out on the kite, live fish. Stop, stop. We're at Sunset Drag. Pen Torque 60. Yesterday, so the first day we were here, two days ago, we explored the island, got to know it. This is one of the spots we came to. Uh, the second day, which is yesterday, we fished to the North Point. We caught a big Nassau grouper, some big trigger fish. And today we're kite fishing in the southwest corner at Sandy Point. I got a big old lemon shark on right now. That's a big shark, dude. Guys, that's a that's a big shark. There he goes. Guys, close I can get to him. 
Eric had to help me. It's just me and Eric here. There's no way I could lift. That shark was close to 200 pounds. There's no way on 80 pound test I could, I could wire that thing up safely without turning my microphone or hurting myself with that fish or hurting the shark. It is what it is. Let's get re-rigged. Try again. We caught the most perfect cuda for bait. I, I spent like 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes making the rig. I left the barracuda in the surf. He was just swimming around, he was happy. We, uh, I rigged it up. We were slowly putting it out, me and Eric, who's filming right now. Davis and Preston went to go get pizza. Been gone for a while. And while I was putting the cuda out, the shark was cruising the trough. He could, you could see there was like this moment where he went, woo! And he, he picked up on this trail of the cuda and he went out there and ate it. Popped it out. I mean, that fish was close to 200 pounds, if, if not more. And it's really hard to land one of those by yourself with 80 pound test. I mean, normally with shark leaders, I have 400 to up to a thousand pound mono shock leader. And when you have that, you can really put your weight into it. But with 80 pound test, there's, there's only so much you could do. So it is what it is. If we had the team here, we definitely would have landed that fish and, and taken the take, taking the hooks out. You know, I, I never like leaving a fish with hooks in, in its mouth, but unfortunately, that situation, it, it happened. It just, no, nothing you can do, but, well, I gotta try to get another bait right now. Hopefully the guys come back soon and get in our, get in our line out there. This lady made homemade, homemade bohemian pizza. Yeah, yeah, I'm starved, bro. I have a headache, I'm so hungry, bro. Yeah. She makes homemade bread there as well, in her house. Yeah. I can't give it anymore, bro. I don't have anything left in me, bro. I'm so tired. I've been going so hard trying to get something to happen on this kite. We got the, got the lemon shark when you guys were getting pizza. Caught some nice wrasse. Caught a barracuda. You did not see that on camera. I rigged it up and set it out there for for an awesome, the most perfect bait ever. And the lemon shark ate it. So disappointed, but dude, I still we had a great day, bro. We we learned a lot about kite fishing. I mean. Very few people have attempted what we have attempted today. I mean, that kite is so far out, we, we couldn't use traditional kite fishing tackle. We had to use balloons on the kite line to even be able to see where the line is. I mean, I've never done that before. Yeah. This is like, this is what, is this your first kite, kite fishing yeah, experience? Yeah, it's the first time I've ever even seen a kite. It's a lot of work, bro. It is a lot of it's work. It's a lot of work. For one line. Yeah. A lot of work for one line. And we don't have a live well, so every time we have to put it out, we have to go catch a fresh bait. Yeah, we have to walk the beach, catch that fresh bait, time, run yeah. it down, put it in a bucket, rig up, yeah. send it up. Yeah. And then we have to worry about the kite going in the water here. Exactly. Because the wind keeps changing. And this is only day three, and we've, we've walked up like 10 miles already, and it's just, I think everybody's tired. And... Tomorrow, guys, or on the next show, we are going to do a multi-species challenge. So we're going to go hit this spot and two more spots to the, uh, east here. And we're gonna do a challenge to me and Preston to see who can catch 10 species double digits first. Yeah. Good work today, fun. man. Yeah. Not every day is Christmas, but we worked really hard today. We got some, got some decent yeah. fish. To, I wish you could have seen the lemon shark, bros. Yeah, I wish It was big, seen bro. That. We were gone 30 minutes and missed it. Yeah, <laughs> what would have happened then, dude? But guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you go and check out our Black to Bitch store, blacktobitch.com. Check out Crocs, guys. Where's your Crocs at, bro? They're around here somewhere. Check in next week for the next episode. There we go, there we go. Big fish, big fish, big fish, big fish, big fish. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna follow him.